Hello open source silicon enthusiasts and welcome to another news update. Today we've got news about the free silicon conference videos, not one but two open source PDKs. We've got some exciting results back from MPW2, tiny tape out, and some more progress on the fib edit and the wire bonding. So let's get started. Now, I missed a month because I took a holiday, so there's quite a few things to go back on, and this blog post was published on August the 3rd. Global Foundries is joining Google's Open Source Silicon Initiative. It's a 180 nanometer process. It should be cheaper, and it might even be faster to get results back. I've been told that we're going to get two shuttles running by the end of the year, so stay tuned for information on those. The place that it will be announced first will be on the GF180 mailing list, so that's a good place to sign up and get the latest information. We also had news of a new Skywater PDK, so this is now a 90 nanometer PDK. Apparently this will give us better digital performance, but it will cost more. So maybe we'll get back uh, less chips or maybe they'll run less wafers. We're not sure exactly when the first one is going to be available to run, but I've been told it's going to be in the latter half of 2023. So it's fantastic that we've got more open source PDKs being released. I'm super excited about it. And I think that this is a great sign that the world of open source silicon is going to continue growing. The free silicon conference that I attended in Paris a couple of months ago was really good. And you can see some other videos that I made about those and some interviews I did. And now the talks, the recordings of the talks have been published. So you can go on to the free silicon um, website, uh, find a talk that you're interested in, and then hopefully when you click on the link, you'll get straight into the video. I've also found that if you go on to Peertube and search FSIC 2022, you can see all the recorded videos and there are some really good talks there. So I encourage you to watch a few and get up to date with the latest goings on in the world of open source EDA. That brings us on to news of tiny tape out. So I've made a bit of a mess up on the YouTube channel and I didn't publish the video publicly. It was just on the website. So I'm sorry if a few people here missed out, but don't worry, we'll be running it again next time. It's an educational program that makes it even easier to get involved in the world of open source silicon. Uh, you can still take part if you go to www.tinytapeout.com. There's an intro video and all the instructions you need. We've closed submissions now and we're submitting to eFabulous MPW7. We had uh, quite a lot of activity. We built a new Discord community of 200 people. We got 20,000 visits on the website. We were picked up by Ardafruit, Hacker News and EE News. We had 150 projects submitted and then I bonded all those little designs together into this one uh, die that we've now submitted to eFabulous for MPW7. So if you want to have a go, then get involved. We will be running it again. It seems like it's got a lot of energy. Uh, we saw loads of great stuff being posted on Twitter with the uh, hashtag tiny tape out. So if you want to see what kind of things people have been doing, like ASIC design on a Steam Deck or more cool renders from Maximo Balestrini, uh, then please do get involved. And I also think it's really important to point out that the success of something like Tiny Tape Out is only possible due to all the people putting in all the work on the open source tooling that I depended on to build this project. And as well as uh, the UCCHQ team and the eFabulous team, we've also on the Tiny Tape Out project got a lot of help from um, TNT, who you know is Sylvain Minot, who really helped with making sure the scan chain was going to work and not get uh, messed up with hold violations. So thanks a lot, Sylvain, and thanks a lot, everyone else who was involved and made it such a great project. So you may have heard the news that MPW2 silicon has been uh, tested by eFabless and they should be sending that out to us soon. And you may also have heard that they've got some similar problems that they had with MPW1 to do with the GPIO configuration around the outside of the chip. The CPU does seem to be working better though. So we're still waiting on information about that. And if you want to learn more, then the best place to go is onto the Sky90 announce channel. I'll put a link in the description so that you can follow along with that. They're making regular updates, but it does seem they've got some good progress. We've seen videos of all the LEDs flashing and they wanted to move on to looking at a user project. So they had one of my chips. We had these 16 designs in from the first iteration of the zero to ASIC course. And so we enabled uh, the two of my 
beginner how to design digital logic designs, a frequency counter and a RGB mixer that generates PWM signals. And we had a go at trying to get those to work. So it seems like there's maybe something not quite right with the frequency generator. We don't know the frequency counter. We don't exactly know what that is yet. I'm hoping to get my hands on the silicon soon. But we did see this great result on the RGB mixer by feeding in the, uh, the knob turns to change the PWM values. We can see the PWM values updating correctly. So that is really good to see. I'm very happy that that is working and I'm looking forward to getting my silicon trying to bring up both designs and then I'll be sending off the silicon to all the other 14 people that took part in MPW2 as part of the Zero to Asic course. So if you've also got uh, silicon coming back from MPW2, then uh, make sure that you let me know about it. I'm really interested to cover the successful projects that we're coming back now from these shuttles. And finally, I've got another teaser for you on the Fib Edit. So this is a project that I'm doing with Olivier from Texplained, and this photo is a finished die that's been bonded out. So now this is ready to be tested. We can check that it's going to boot, load some firmware, and then we can make the edit to cut the lines to control the GPIO programming register. And then we can try to work out uh, exactly where that problem is, where the hold violation is occurring. And although I thought maybe this project wasn't going to be uh, quite so pertinent because we've moved on, we've got to MPW2, given that MPW2 does have some kind of similar problems, maybe this will also shed some light on that. And also we've got the preparation, the groundwork in place so that we can take dies from the MPW2 run and do the same thing now that we've already um, done the groundwork on the MPW1. So thanks very much, Olivier, and uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss the updates when we start releasing them. Hopefully in the next month or so, we'll start releasing some updates on the Fib Edit process that is going to be solely focusing on that. And one final bit of bonus news is that Torsten has published his guide on building these amazing 3D printed models of the standard cells. So if you fancy having a go at that yourself, then check out his guide. He's published that on Medium and you can have a read through and try for yourself. So thanks everyone for watching. Hope you had a great summer. It's good to be back. Um, we'll be going back to a normal monthly schedule on the news updates. So stay tuned and have a great day.